Welcome back to the Battery Hacker channel. Today we are going to break down a very common question. How many solar panels are required to keep a refrigerator or freezer running all day, every day? To get the answer, we will go step by step. First, we will measure how much electricity the fridge consumes in a day. Then we will look at the idle power loss of the inverter something most people completely ignore. After that, we will size the battery properly. And finally, we will calculate how many solar panels are needed to recharge that battery within a single day. All right, let's begin with the fridge power consumption. The fridge I'm testing is rated at 75 watts, and it also includes a small freezer compartment. From my earlier test results, the total energy used over a full week came out to 4,288 watt-hours. If we divide that by seven days, it averages around 600 watt-hours per day. Now, you might think, wait a second, if it is 75 watts and it runs 24 hours a day, that should be 1,800 watt-hours, not 600 watt-hours. And you're correct, but here's the trick. A refrigerator doesn't run continuously. The compressor only switches on for about 30% of the time, which works out to roughly 8 hours each day. Let's confirm. 8 hours multiplied by 75 watts equals 600 watt-hours per day. In my case, this matches perfectly. For you, the result might be different, depending on how often you open the fridge and the temperature around it. For reference, I open my fridge about 10 times a day in an environment of around 20 degrees Celsius, 68 degrees Fahrenheit. If you're unsure about your own fridge, I recommend using a plug-in energy meter and measuring the total over a week. That way, you'll have an exact number. So far, we know the refrigerator itself consumes about 600 watt-hours per day. But here's something that many people forget. The inverter also wastes a bit of power even when no load is connected. For example, if you are using a 1,000-watt inverter, it can draw around 20 watts continuously just to stay on. Over 24 hours, that adds up to 20 watts multiplied by 24 hours equals 480 watt hours. Now, let's add this to the fridge consumption. 600 watt-hours plus 480 watt-hours equals 1,080 watt-hours per day. This number represents the actual daily energy demand you need to cover. But here's another challenge. What if the sun doesn't shine for a couple of days? To stay safe, I usually recommend planning for at least three days of backup, also known as days of autonomy. And since we're going with lithium batteries, which are more cost-effective in the long run, we also need to account for their usable capacity. To extend their lifespan, it's best to only use them between 10% and 90% state of charge, which means multiplying the capacity by a factor of 1.2. Now let's put everything together. 1,080 watt-hours multiplied by 1.2 and then multiplied by 3 days equals 3,888 watt-hours of total battery storage required. Depending on which system voltage you choose, here's how that looks in battery size. With a 12-volt battery bank, you'll need around 300 amp-hours. With a 24-volt setup, that comes to about 150 amp-hours. And with a 48-volt system, only 75 amp-hours are required. Personally. I recommend going with 48 volts because it allows for thinner wires, a more efficient charge controller, and overall lower system cost. If you want to check the battery I personally recommend, I've added a link in the description below. Now that we know the battery size needed, let's move on to the solar panels. Remember, the panels must be able to fully recharge the battery within one day. The exact number of panels depends on how many hours of good sunlight your location receives. For this, you can use the PV Watts website. 
Just enter your location, click Go, and then check the results. For example, if we look at Houston, Texas, the minimum sunlight during the winter is about 3.5 hours per day. We always size the system based on the worst month of the year, so we'll use that number. Now, let's calculate 3,888 watt-hours divided by 3.5 hours equals 1,110 watts of solar panels. Yes, that might sound like a lot, but keep in mind this is designed for the darkest month and includes three full days of autonomy. In other words, even when sunlight is weak, your fridge will continue to run without issues. You can repeat the same calculation for your own fridge and your own location. Just change the daily consumption number and the sun hours, and you'll get the exact panel size you need. And that's it. We now know the fridge power use, inverter idle loss, battery size, and the number of solar panels required. If you found this breakdown useful, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future guides here on the Battery Hacker channel.